The murder of my son has shown me that what happens to any of us anywhere in the world had better be the business of all of us. The words of Mamie Till Mobley, Emmett Till's mother. Jennifer Pace Robinson, CEO of the Children's Museum, says Emmett Till, known as Bobo, was just 14 when he was murdered. We wanted to approach it from the understanding that it's our job to stand up for voices of children um, who have been through these circumstances. A new exhibit, co-created by the Children's Museum, opens in September and tells the story of Till's life and death and why people should know about it so that cowardly acts of racial violence are exposed and are less likely to happen again. How about a letter of forgiveness from me to him? Some people would say, that's just next to impossible. How could you possibly do that? But you somehow found it inside yourself. I I do not understand the whole, that whole event in a logical mind, it didn't make sense to me. But when it popped into my head, I liked the idea that I could give him a gift of thanks for willing to document the gas chamber. That was because there was no documentation of the gas chamber that I could show anybody. At a middle middle school in Coralville, Iowa, Indiana's Pete Buddha judge made his case for one last time in the state. Chris Davis reports on his supporters. Meet one of the people who plans to caucus tonight. You know, with children in cages right now, with our courts being packed with extremists, Pete has a way to get the most voters on board so we can actually put a stop to those things. Erin Hazen is from Solon, near Iowa City. She says she believes Mayor Pete is one of the few who actually actually has a chance to beat President Trump, she says his plans, to her, are realistic. In Iowa, Chris Davis, 93 WIBC Mobile News. I'm behind. Well, Chris Davis reports on why people did that in Iowa. It might sound like arguing, or at least loud talking. When you hear that, though, you know a voter has changed sides and is caucusing for someone else. My biggest attribute in a candidate is is someone who's young, energetic. Like Justin Jordan, who had been caucusing for Andrew Yang. Um, A good critical thinker, which which Yang and Pete both, I feel, are. He was forced to convert to supporting Mayor Pete when Yang was no longer viable, meaning he didn't make the cut. In Pleasantville, Iowa, Chris Davis, 93 WIBC Mobile News. He'll vote for it. live up to what was promised with thousands of people showing up. Uh, I'm standing uh, right here at the State House entrance, the main entrance, and uh, the line is down the street. I've talked to people from both sides in this line. Women's health care is not the legislature's business, uh, when it, except for when it comes to like licensing doctors. Well, just hoping to encourage leg- legislators to stand strong on uh, the abortion ban and make sure that there's good penalties for people who break the law and, and uh, you know, got to defend Life. The vice president is scheduled to arrive sometime this hour at the State House. Chris Davis, 93 WIBC Mobile News. There was a fatal WIBC Mobile News on the level, on the go. A nightmare in broad daylight. All of the rain is somewhere else, like Richmond and Kokomo, but nothing on radar in Indianapolis. Temperature 91 right now. I'm Chris Davis. Here's what's trending at 502. The wreck of the many semi-trucks near Lebanon. 93 WIBC's Matt Bear explains why you want to avoid Boone County on I-65. Two semi-crashes on southbound 65 before U.S. 52 in Lebanon. The first one encountered has... Growing again. You're listening to Meet Pete. In 2017, Pete Buttigieg tried for a national post for the first time as chair of the DNC. Even though that didn't work out in his favor, he was up for another, even bigger challenge. I live with the knowledge that there are people in power today who would, if they could, deny my family the right legally even to exist for the simple reason that my spouse is a husband and not a wife. His rhetoric changed. His speeches more bold in their criticism of President Trump and his administration. As vice president, one heartbeat away from the Oval Office is a social extremist the likes of which our country has not known in national office. Trust me, I know one. Then Mayor Pete announced he was forming an exploratory committee, meaning he put together a team to research to see if a run for president was feasible. I belong to a generation that is stepping forward right now. 
we're the generation that down landlong. I was I was in summer camp in Michigan, and we gathered up in a bar. Dr. David Wolf was just 13 then. Uh, again, around a little black and white TV. Purdue space historian John Norberg is in Europe and has found a cafe in France to watch. And we, we watched it on TV. Uh, it was coming on in French. We were the only Americans in the place. They were toasting us. The French are translating for him. It was an incredible, incredible night that I will never forget. Armstrong informs Houston that the original target landing site had been too rough and that he had to fly by the seat of his pants to find a new site before setting down. Houston, uh, that may have seemed like a very long final phase. Uh, the auto-targeting was taking us right into a uh, At the foot of the ladder, I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Now the two men would have to get used to not only walking on the deathly silent moon. You have to be careful that you're leaning in the direction you want to go, otherwise you uh, watch at the edge of that crater. Is, uh, yeah, that's soft. real soft there, isn't it? But also maneuvering the tools it would take to collect samples. It has a stark beauty all its own. It's uh, like m- much of the high desert of uh, the United States. It's uh, different, but it's very... The community. I was going to say, uh, what's fun is really is, is to see somebody who's at the top of their game or has been at the top of their game for such a long time be still really stoked about it. Oh, I'm totally stoked. Um, I've been wanting equality for everyone, which means nutrition, exercise, all those opportunities, access. Um, my brother and I had access to public parks as a child, and also we had free coaching. Uh, those are the things that are really important, and that's what the NJTL does. If you notice people out here giving them coaching, and, and it's free. So you want free access. That's what lights a fire in a child's heart and mind, and then hopefully when they grow up, they'll give back as well, because the more you give, you do get more. So I'm hoping we can instill that into them, and I want to find I out wonder now. Uh, because you know, I've seen a lot of uh, a lot of YouTube's of uh, some of the early TV appearances, or some of the TV appearances around the time of American Pie and Vincent. And you were a, a singular performer at the time. You had just you and a guitar. And I wonder how long it took you to uh, finally kind of acquiesce and and go uh, less folky and, and have a band with you whenever you toured. Well, I was evolved. I wanted to accomplish that because. I loved so many kinds of music, but I really uh, loved Pete Seeger a lot. And I wanted to do a solo thing like he did. And so I did that, you know, pretty much throughout the 70s when I was at my most popular. He would get up, say, 4.35, be working at 6 five or six at night, you'd have a couple hours to wash your stinky ass and, uh, sorry, <laughs> and uh, and then go eat your uh, rice flour water. Thomas Bikeman, who had been with the church since he was a baby in Indianapolis, went reluctantly to Guyana with the temple. And then you had to sit there and listen to him till two or three o'clock in the morning, go to bed at two or three, maybe four, you know, and then get up two or three hours later and improper nutrition, overwork. There was no fight left in anybody because when you, when you do that to people, it's easy to control. They don't have the, they might have the will, but they don't have no fight. His mom, brother, and father also migrated. You talk about somebody that was resourceful, that's my dad. I, to this day, how he come up with coffee in the middle of nowhere, it's beyond me. Out in the middle of Guyana? Yeah, out in the jungle. It just became so ugly there where you were afraid everywhere you went. I mean, from notes being posted on my time card at work. I mean, even a Delco. And one Friday when I got off work, four of my tires, only one was slashed, I guess. And But the, somebody had let the air out of all the others. I mean, that's when a bullet hole was shot through our window. That level of drama would eventually help lead to the White's departure from their hometown. I think that was a small segment, but it 
was so vocal and so ugly that it got a lot of press. I was talking about, uh, you know, they accused you of what, spitting on the on the vegetables or something? Yeah, spitting on vegetables and taking bites out of cookies and putting them back. The media attention was soon focused on Ryan, who went to Italy to speak about his experiences. He began appearing on talk shows. So I made a point of going to Ryan at the end of the show and giving him a kiss and hugging him. Sally Jesse Raphael in an interview with the Television Academy. I think a lot of people were scared for me. They thought, oh my, she's going to get AIDS. But education thwarts fear. Jeannie White Gender remembers the first celebrity to befriend Ryan was diver Greg Luganis. He was the first person, and then um, when we went to the AMFAR benefit in New York uh, by uh, AMFAR, uh, Ryan went on TV on Good Morning America. And David Hartman asked him, he said, Ryan White, who are you looking forward to meeting at this AIDS benefit? And Ryan said, meeting Elton John, definitely. Jeannie, do you remember the last thing that he said to you and the last thing that you said to him? I thought Ryan was doing better. I went to get my mom at the airport. And when I came back, um, uh, I remember us talking and he said, Mom, if I got a chance, I want to go for it. And I said, okay, and I gave him a big hug and told him I loved him. And I didn't really ever think that was going to be the last time, you know, that I would see him. The morning after Farm Aid. It is with great sadness and deeply felt personal loss that I must inform you that Ryan White has died of the complications of his AIDS. I said, this kid should go back to school. While the movie may have tarnished the reputation of Kokomo, Ryan White's story brought attention to AIDS, kids with AIDS, and the need for money for research. While the disease was not given much attention during the first years of the Reagan administration, in 1987, after Ryan's story had become widely known, more federal money was being devoted to finding a cure. How do we protect the citizens of this nation? And where do we start? For one thing, it's absolutely essential that the American people understand the nature and the extent of the AIDS problem. And it's important that federal and state governments do the same.